fun. The only Miss Penny Drogis, Kara Gorgeous. I mean, we haven't seen you on our TV screens in a hot minute on RHONJ, Penny, but Definitely. I mean, well, where we left off, Penny, is season five. I mean, simpler times, right? Yeah, they were simpler. A lot has happened since season five, but um, yeah, that was not the best ending for sure. And till this day, I'm holding such and then a vendetta. I have like such such anger in me over it and the lies that were told. And I'm I I mean I was and there was a gag order put placed on me at the time, so I couldn't say anything. Now I'm allowed to say whatever I want. Who placed the gag order on you after season five? Uh, the day after filming season five, the night that filming wrapped up. I was placed with a $2 million gag order by Bravo. And just saying what? Like you signed a contract? I was not allowed to speak of anything that had happened. And when you say you're not allowed to talk about anything that happened, you're talking about that second, that second posh opening. I think it was like the Moxie Salon. There was that physical fight that broke out. That was the last time you were able to kind of speak about things. Right after that, they served me the following, I would say two days after. Did you? It was Saturday, Easter was Sunday, and then Monday I got served. The gag order, because of the contract you signed, did they say, remember, like, was that in the initial contract? No, like, it was not. It you know. was just, they didn't want anything from that specific night spoken about. But like, okay, so like, if you get a contract, I'm a lawyer, but I mean, I don't right. practice law, but like, if you get a contract, there has to be consideration. So like, if you served me a contract with a gag order, I would tell you to go mm-hmm. fuck yourself. Now, well, if you put money in my bank account, I would shut up. Sure. Right. So but like at the time... They put the order on me because John did not have a contract. John was just uh, just an appearance for that night. So obviously, because he was just an appearance, they knew I was going to defend him, obviously, for what went right. down. So it was made for that night because they knew I was not going to hold back my tongue. And what? They said, if you talk, we're going to sue you. Uh, we're yes. going to come after well, you. Well, they said, you know, if I spoke about that specific filming, um, that I would be sued for $2 million. Probably then, it, probably in breach of like the contract you signed, probably oh, to film that it, probably that night. Yeah, that if I said anything that had to do with the filming of it, said Moxie Posh opening, because so, obviously lawyers got involved. It was you know it was not, it didn't go the way it was supposed to. John was completely set up. Um, Joe Gorga and Mr. Wakili had gone to visit him at Rod's Hut. And spoke to him that night. So he was totally taken back by the whole thing. I was, whatever I signed up to do, that was between me, him, whatever. But don't play him the way you played him. And then put that whole ugly rumor about him out. Basically, I don't want to like put words in anyone's mouth. Basically, like Bravo was like threatening you to keep yes, quiet. or no, they would it, wasn't, it wasn't basically, they threatened me. They said, if you speak, you're getting sued. And it was specifically about that last episode. Because they knew that they they were pretty much done for. I don't know if they thought that, you know, we weren't going to do anything and just let it, you know, the two minute, you know, we're here now, see us go. No, I mean, you can't do that to somebody. I mean, livelihood, personality. It, it, you They just destroyed everything at that night for what? Yeah. So, no, John was not going to back down and they knew that. And obviously they did it because they were scared of truths coming out. All right, so where do you want to start? So, right, so, I mean, how did you get on the show, I guess? I met, well, I, it's crazy, because I knew Kim way back in the day when her son was, Christopher was small, because I used to go to Cliffside Park High School, and I used to walk up the hill, and I would see Kim there. You know, Christopher was little, and it was, I used to wave, do whatever I had to do, and kept it going, and we had mutual friends, and it, then we, I saw her on the show one day when you were I mean, filming, I think, season one or two, and we reached out, and I was just like, you know, we rekindled. I'm like, I knew you. It was just the way it happened. It was just such a small world. And you came on, like, when all those rumors were going around about Melissa, like the whole stripper thing, like, that's kind of the time that you came into this whole fold. Angelo and Lookers, and, you know, they were they were true. How did you know Angelo, the, the manager of Lookers? Angelo was very um, a family close friend of John's and he used to come to the salon all the time and hang out with us and he managed her. How do you know the rumors were true that Melissa was a stripper at Lookers? Because he was her manager, Angelo, and he came on the show and confronted her with it. And then that whole thing happened where Kim played with the big boys. 
Well, you know, Teresa has said a bunch of times, you know, that she never really knew you, never spoke to you and John, like basically wasn't involved in stripper gate. So like prior to like, you know, Angelo coming on the show and the whole stripper gate thing, you know, what was your correspondence like back and forth? Like, what did you discuss like back and forth with Teresa? Well, um, what happened was obviously she was on the show. And I remember John had Teresa's number. John, one night, you know, we were talking and John called her up and it was terrible what she was doing to her. I mean, she was trying to destroy Teresa at the time and I felt bad. And I, you know, told her, I'm like, I feel bad for what's going on between you and your brother. So we had a conversation. I have a brother. I wouldn't want that happening to me. And, you know, she said how, you know, her family was, how strict her dad was. And I'm like, you know, Greeks, Italians, family, you know, we're the same strict Greek growing up, Italians growing up. And she was saying how devastated her father was and how she never went to see her father-in-law in the hospital. Father, Teresa's father was in the hospital. And she said to me, do you know if this is true? And I said, yes. And I, she said, how? And I said, well, you know, Angelo used to work there. And um, the at the time, the salon I worked at, one of the owners, prior owners there, used to know her very well, confirmed it. And she said, would you go on and say it? And then she said, you know, but please don't ever say it was me because I don't want, you know, my, me and my brother, I want me and my brother to be close. Don't ever reveal it was me. And I said, I won't. Don't worry about it. I would never say it was you. I said, because I wouldn't want this happening to my family. Everything went as played. She knew, you know, her big thing was don't, it can never seem for me. So obviously it had to come from Kim. Well, you know, in that scene, Teresa really acted like she didn't know anything. You know, she acted surprised. She's a lot smarter than she appears. And she wants it to seem like what? Innocent, so like her brother doesn't think you're trying As, to break yes. up my marriage. Right, like Penny, exactly. Penny's the one that brought this up. Right. Well, actually, no, at the time they were blaming Kim. Why do you think Melissa will still not, I mean, we know a stripper. So now she says she was what, a, a bartender at the place? So there's like so many things. Well, I actually had on one of her ex-colleagues from Lookers, this woman, Nicole, she's wonderful. You know, she said Angelo really had it rough after the show and that, you know, his fiance or girlfriend left, you know, because of the whole thing. And, you know, his life was kind of ruined and all this other stuff. He's no longer with that woman. That night, he um, actually, she called him and that's why he had to leave abruptly. So I don't know how she got wind. Yeah, he's no longer with her. He's happy now. Back on his feet. He's in a great relationship. Why did this woman break up with him, though? Like, what? Like, what was her motivation? She just that, didn't want I, it. She didn't want to be, you know, I guess she, the, the backlash she was going to get. It could have been anything. She did have little kids. So who knows what happens in a relationship? What what backlash? Just because like Melissa was on the show and Melissa said he was lying and because Melissa was on the show, the public would believe her and then kind of come for Angelo. And then what? That would make him like a hated man and it would make him hard to date. Then the backlash you get from the public. I think it was more that than anything. But you know, right. he's happy now. He's working now. He's, he's doing good. They still show him constantly, all the time. You know, he's got to live with that. Unfortunately, they look what they did to him, exactly what they tried to do to John. For some reason, they, I don't know what it is with the Gorgas, but they destroy, they make the Gorgas look good, whether they're right or wrong. For some reason, they come out smelling like roses and everybody else, everybody, they did to the Wachilis too. And who uh, you like, think, you think Bravo like gives them a good edit is what yes, you're saying? Absolutely. I think they favor the Gorgas more than Teresa. That's my, that's from what I'm, what I've seen and what I.